Oh, I thank you, Lord. I didn't want to share this with you all, but there are times in the night watch that I cry and I pray all night for you, this church. And since I started praying for this church, my life has changed. I'll wake up and I'm praying in tongues. I'll see your faces. I have dreams about you. I have I go places in the night. That's why I'm tired over there sleeping. <laughs> Because I've done some things in the night watch. My life has changed. It has totally changed. Things happen in the night that I cannot explain. And I will not try to explain it. But I am a new creature in Christ. And I want to change even more. I'm crying out for change. I want the heart of the pastor to be my saint, my heart that I change, that I change. And that's our heart cry is that we change, that we're changing on a daily basis, that as the word of God goes forth, Father God, that we change the washing of the water of the word as it goes forth, just like, uh, uh, just like, uh, water, like, like, uh, water is, is, it's like, a, if we was to get into a, uh, a, a, a hollow place the water is like mid, the word is like many waters be healed, be healed, be healed be healed, be saved, be saved be saved, be delivered, be delivered it's always speaking to you it's always speaking the blood is always speaking it's always speaking, it's always speaking and you know what we, because God said we know his voice and the stranger's voice will not follow he said it you have to receive it and believe it so it can operate in your life. I hear the voice of the Lord. I know his voice and the strangest voice how not follow. Because you know the word, because you meditate upon the word day and night, you'll be like a tree planted by the rivers of living water that bring forth fruit in its season. And whatever you do, your leaves will not wither, but they'll bring forth fruit. Fruit. And that's what we want. We want, we want fruit to come forth from our lives. This church was founded upon prayer. And prayer is the foundation for the Christian. That's your foundation. That's your foundation. You're communicating with the Father. That's the way you communicate with Him. So, you know, if you're having some problems in your life, or you praying the, the word of God, or are you just telling God your problems? Do He told me to ask you this: Do you have your problems, or do your problems have you? Okay, because now if they got you, you're in trouble. So you want to have your problems. Why do you want to have them? Why do you want to have them? You want to have them because what did God tell you to do? He said to cast all your care up on me because I care for you affectionately. You don't have to carry those things. He said take his yoke up on you and learn of him. His yoke is easy. His burden is light. So when we go to him, we, we already have the answer to the problem. Do you want to receive it? Or do you just want to keep speaking what you have and not what he desires for you. You know, he desires so much for us. He, he desires so much more. He said, if we would seek first the kingdom of God. He said, all these things. All these things. So, several, so therefore, what we are seeking should be the kingdom of God. Because we know those things are going to come behind that. Those things are going to come. You know, the, sometimes... The things that we pray for, we really don't need to pray for. You say you want a new car. You want another job. You, th these are natural things. He said that, that stuff is going to follow. But we got to seek for his kingdom. His kingdom. His ways of being and doing what is right. You know? And those are the things that he wants us to change. He wants to change our character. He wants to change our walk, our talk. But this is on a daily basis. And it takes time because you have been living this life 
for so long. So he has to slowly carve away, put you on that potter's wheel and slowly squeeze, you know, squeeze some of those things out of you. Or the oil is going to flow when he squeezes. You, you know, when you feel the things pulling at you, and you say, well, that's not good for you. It might be good for her, but it's not good for you. I'd rather you didn't go to that store. I'd rather you didn't do this. I'd rather you didn't do that. But these are things that or will cause you to grow. He knows what each one of us need to grow, to cause us to grow. He knows what we need. So, therefore, when we pray, we want to pray his perfect will, which is his word. And what did he tell us? He said he would give us power. He said he would give us power over what? All the enemy. All the enemy can be put underneath our feet. Uh, I heard uh, a minister was giving, he was talking about Kenneth. Hagen and he said Kenneth Hagen was talking to the Lord and when he started talking to the Lord it's like the Lord visited him so as the Lord was talking to him the devil came and the devil started talking to him also but he was trying to hear what God was saying and the, 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 the that evil spirit was right there you you know talk, you know putting you down and talking and talking and talking and and he said Lord why don't you do something about it he said the Lord didn't say anything. The Lord kept talking. So you know what he said the Lord told him? I gave you power. I, I'm not going to do anything else. I have done everything that needs to be done. It's already finished. God said it was finished. When he, when he died on the cross and rose again, he gave you power to overcome. You got to speak to that devil. You, got, you have dominion. You got to speak to some of those things. Just say, for instance, somebody's lying on you. You know they're lying. That's a lie, and I don't receive it. You don't receive it. You speak to those things. I don't receive it in the name of Jesus. You don't have to tell them that, but you tell the spirit behind that person, I don't receive it in the name of Jesus. So the Lord said it was nothing he could do. He was waiting on him to do something. So he had to rise up saying, in the name of Jesus, you foul spirit, you get out of here. And the spirit left. So there are times we have to rise up. We have to rise up and we have to speak what the word of God says to speak concerning that situation. I had trouble with my feet. And I had to walk it out. And if I had stopped walking, I believe I would have been in the wheelchair. That's how bad they hurt. But I couldn't walk around and tell everybody the pain I was in. I couldn't stop doing all the work that I needed to do. I couldn't stop. The uh, doctor didn't say she could do anything for me, none other than send me to a, a specialist. And... She said, you're going to have to work it out. You're going to have to walk it out. Because that muscle, that tendon underneath your feet is not loosening. It's tightening. And it would make me not be able to bend my feet or have to walk on my toes. Or sometimes my feet didn't even want to move because that muscle underneath, the, all that function right together with your heel, all, you know, it, anybody with foot problems know that it, it, it all has to work together. It all has to work together for your feet to move properly. So I've had to walk it out. It's been painful, but I've had to walk it out. Some of you have circumstances and situations that you need to walk out. It's painful, but you know what? All things work together for your good. It's working for my good. It's working for my good. I can put my heels on. I can, I can I can walk. I'm just so thankful that I didn't give up, that I didn't just shut down. And I'm not going to tell you that I didn't want to in the name of Jesus, but I did. Because a lot of times it was so painful and it hurt. It hurt so bad. It hurt so bad. But I didn't have a choice. You don't have a choice in the matter. 
we, if you look at it that way, do you have a choice in the matter? Do you want victory or defeat? What was purchased for you? Victory. Victory. We overcome. We overcome by the blood of the Lamb, the word of our testimony, loving not our lives to death. We overcome. We overcome. We are overcomers. I don't care what it looked like. That's what you tell yourself when you get up in the morning. I'm an overcomer. I'm an overcomer. And I overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of my testimony. You know, the Lord said he beseech you. In Romans, uh, that's Romans 1, 12 and 1. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living, a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. He does not want our live service. He wants our hearts. He wants our heart. He wants what we do to come from the heart. He said that we have some of us I'm talking to me. I'm, when I'm preaching, I'm talking to myself also. Some of us have lost our focus. We've let situations, circumstances, uh, hurt, pain, cause us to lose our focus and our vision. And we want it back. Lord, give it back to us. Revive us, oh Lord. Revive us. Revive us. You know, because you can let the things that's coming against you stop you from doing the things that God is telling you to do. Because you think this hurts you so much more, but God said, I got something, I got something far greater for you. And if you go through this, I, you know what's going to happen? Every day is a new day with Jesus. That was yesterday. Today is a new day. So what we're going to do, we're going to walk it out. Every day. We're going to walk it out. We're going to walk it out. That's what you used to tell me every day. Just walk it out. Walk it out. Change your shoes if you have to. Walk it out. Walk it out. Walk it out. Even if it's hurting, walk it out. Even if it's not true and you're, you're being lied on, walk it out. Even if it's verbal abuse, walk it out. Walk it out. Walk it out. Even if it's your finances, walk it out. We're going to work the word. We are going to work the word of God. The word will not work unless you work it. Faith without works is dead. You can confess the word and don't do nothing, and you're going to have nothing. You got to believe what you're confessing and what you're saying with your mouth. Believe what you're praying. God is well able. Don't give up on God because he won't give up on you. He's able. He's able. He's able. He's faithful to do those things which he has promised you. He is faithful. He's faithful. And, you know, so we have to, you, it's, it's, it's coming a time in the body <clears throat> that faith is going to have to arise. We're going to have to fight the good fight of faith. To hold on to the promises of God. We have to fight that good fight of faith. What is the good fight of faith? We're to stand on the word. We're going to stand no matter what it look like. No matter what it feel like. No matter what it tastes like. No matter what someone else is saying. What someone else is doing. What do you believe? What do you believe as an individual? This is an individual thing as well as it is a group thing. We are a body. We are the body of Christ. You all, we all have personal relationships with the Lord Jesus Christ. We all have prayer lives. We all have foundations. You got to build up on your own foundation. This church, yes, we pray as we pray collectively. We pray. Yes, we pray. What are you praying individually? You have got to judge yourself. You've got to look at yourself. You know whether or not you have an active prayer life or not. Well, you're going to have to get one. You're going to have to get one. You're going to have to get one. 
because there are times when we will be sent out we will not be sent out with another person that has the word on the inside of them they walking in the holy Ghost. you're not coming. walking in faith and victory you're going to be out there by yourself. What are you going to do? But you're not alone, see, because greater is he that's on the inside of you than he that's in the world. Plus the word of God is what's going to cause you to rise up. The word of God that you have put on the inside of you. During the times when you could put it on the inside of you. It's got to rise up. It's got to cause you to rise up. You got to rise up. So it's got to be some rising up going in, on in the inside of you. But only you know. Only you know. Only you know what's going on. It's between you and the Lord. And all of us want to go together. We all want to get there together. Do we want to get there together? Do we want anyone left behind? That's why we are to be our brother's keeper. We are to look out for individuals in this ministry that seem like they're kind of drawing back a little bit sometimes I look on the faces and it makes me want to cry because he'll show me the hurt he you know every, everybody's just just going on with praising and worshiping and that that person if you look deep in their face he will allow you to see they are hurting. We have put on masks. We've dressed it up. We've dressed it down. We've powdered it and perfumed it, wigged it, and you know, we come in here, we all. But actually and truly, a lot of that is not real. It's not real. And we got to be real. We got to be real. I need somebody, I need help. I need somebody to speak the truth to me in love. You know, if I'm a uh, sister, you, 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 you're off a little bit. That, that's not quite what the word said. Tell me so I can get it straight. Tell me I'm missing it. I want to know. I want to know if I'm speaking the wrong thing, if I'm taking the scripture out of content. I want to know. I don't want you to just say, be blessed. No, because I'm going to go take that wrong scripture to somebody else because I think I am right and I'm wrong. Correct one another in love. Speak the truth in love. We love each other. Our love got to extend further than our immediate families. We are a body. We are a body. When one hurt, all of us hurt. When one hurt, all of us got to hurt. It's, it, you know, we have people that get up and leave. We, we just, you know, discern, discernment, 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 discernment. He wants us to discern, discern, discern. It's not all what it cracked up to be. It's not. It, it hurts. It's hard. We got a lot of broken hearted people. God is going to give us strategy. You know, we say we want to go to the street. When I'm out there, and I'm out there quite a bit with different problems, and uh, another thing, I don't want to leave this out. You cannot solve everybody's problems. You're not the answer to everyone's problems. You're not the answer. God is. You know, even some of the counsel. Just, just shut up. They want you to listen. A lot of times they really want you to listen. Now if God tell you, the Holy Spirit tell you to say something, there's nothing wrong with it. But if he doesn't give you anything to say, just listen. They're hurting. They're bitter. They're angry. They have losses. They're looking at the natural losses. The natural things that they have lost. Uh, I know Jean said when she came, they was at their lowest. They had lost everything that they own. We got still got a lot of people out there like that. You still got some churches that are not up in having church. They're still scattered, and they're still searching. And so, you know, I, I have a lot of notes. I have a lot of stuff. I have this written my little heart out. 
But you know what? I want to be obedient to the Holy Spirit. I want to say what he wants me to say. Because it's, it's really not about me. It's not about me, but it's what God wants to say to our body. God loves us so much. And there is so much that he has in store for us. He has a plan for us. And he want to use every individual in here. Every joint supplying. Every joint has a supply. Everyone is important. Everyone is important. So we want to pull the, the gifts and the callings that God has placed in each individual in here. We, we want it to come forth. We want it to come forth. We want you to shine. We want you to know that God loves you and he needs you. You are very important to this ministry. Each joint is very important. Each joint. We have to hold up the pastor's arms. He gets tired sometimes also. We have to be there. You know, it can't always be as to where pastor's holding up our arms. Or they're praying for us. But we have to be there for them. We have to be there. And it is a sacrifice. It is a sacrifice being a Christian. Are you willing to sacrifice what God expects you to sacrifice? Are you willing to sacrifice to be everything God wants you to be? Are you willing? You, only, you can, only you can answer that. No one else can answer that for you. No one else can answer it. Where is your desire? Where is your heart cry? Where is it? Where is it? So you have to ask yourself that. So this is something that, you know, uh, God said I require. I, re I, I, I don't want lip service. I want it from the heart. I want it from the heart. That's what I want. I want it from the heart. So we, we, we've got to just... It's just some things we've got to change. But it's, it's just a little tweet here, a little tweet there. And when you, once you get on the potter's wheel, you won't even know he took that little part off. You won't even know he cut that off. Or if, if he doesn't cut it off, he's going to stop some of the company that you keep. You're going to wonder why they're not, they're not hanging around you anymore. It was for your good. It was for your good. Don't go back and try to get them. It was for your good. And so, you know, because he's looking out for your good. He's looking out for your good. He's looking out for your good. Every good and perfect gift come from the Father. Every good and perfect gift. And so he wants his children to have everything that he has provided for them. This is something that um, I wrote and uh, the Spirit of the Lord gave it to me. He said we ought to bear one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. That's Galatians 6, 2 and 10. Therefore, as we have opportunity to let us do good to all, especially those who are the household of faith, we commit ourselves to pray and not turn coward, faint, but we won't lose heart. We will not give up. We will not give up. We will not cave in. Because the word of God is going to uphold you. And it's going to keep you. And it's going to cause marrow to come into your bones. It's going to strengthen you. It's going to strengthen you when you're weak. When you lose your focus, you are weak. You're weak. And why, why would he say that? Because then you're double-minded. Double-minded man is not going to receive anything from the Lord. You're double-minded. And then you're running here, you're running there, you're doing all these things. And you don't even know why you're doing them. But you think it's good stuff and it's good things. So we want God to refocus us. Renew us in that area. Let us stay focused. Let us keep our mind on the kingdom of God. Let us keep our mind on the kingdom and what the kingdom requires. And the kingdom of God is within you. It's within you. 
there was a time of one of my neighbors was sick and I I had um that was when I was at home and I could pray all day. I, I just prayed in tongues all day long, all day long, all day long. Because the children went to school and I didn't have to go to work, so all day long I prayed in tongues. I prayed in tongues all day long. And my neighbor across the street, he, he worked at Exxon, and he was very, very sick. And he had come home because he couldn't work anymore. He came outside. And uh, I went over and I was talking to him because he would just take a little walk. He would just take little small walks at a time. And so what rose up on the inside of me was to tell this man that the kingdom of God had come nigh him. And, I, do you know, I was uh, like a little, you know, baby. You, know what I mean? you understand what I'm saying? Because I was like, tell him the kingdom of God. You know. And I told him, and do you know the man got healed? That's all I said. I say, you know what? The kingdom of God has come nigh you today. And he looked at me. And I just stood there. I said, oh, Lord, I ain't got nothing else to say. But that's all you told me to say. The man got healed. The man got healed and went back to work. And I said, my God, see how much power the word of God he has told me. Tell him the kingdom of God has come nigh to you today. Guess he say, I'm. I, he didn't know, and, you know, I didn't know. But it was just that much power to heal the man, the word of God. It was, it was just that much power to heal him. And he received what I said because he was hurting so bad. He was sick. He was hurting. And he received what I said. And so just, just be sensitive to the Holy Spirit. Just say what he tell you to say. Just, just listen with your spiritual ears to what, what, what scripture comes up. What scripture comes up when you're praying? What, what, what is he telling you to say? Are you going to be obedient? Are you going to say, well, I was going to say this. And, and the Holy Ghost is waiting on you to repeat what he just spoke to you in your spirit. When you pray in other tongues... You may not know what you're praying, but what he said, he gave you that. He gave you that because he loves you so much that you can use that. You can pray in the spirit and things take place and they happen without you even knowing what's going on. He said he's touched with the feelings of your infirmity. So when you know not what to pray, when you know not what to say, you know, when you know not. And so, I, I, you know, I thank God for that time in my life. You know, I think about that all the time. We would go out sometime and they say, well, we need to pray. I said, I already prayed. And I guess they probably thought I was just being facetious, but I was telling you the truth. I be done already prayed in tongues. I'm not saying I prayed what y'all what y'all praying about, but I had already prayed in tongues. I had already prayed because that's what I used to do was pray in tongues all day long. And, you know, I didn't, I didn't realize it then. I was energizing my spirit. And every time I went to Walmart, somebody came to tell me their problem. And I didn't realize then wh what was going on. Why did it come, in, you know, to me? Because at that time, I was a baby Christian. And I, I would, you know, I would, I would say what he tell me to say or pray what he tell me to pray. That was a ministry. That was a ministry where he was using me. He was using me, and I didn't even realize it. I didn't, but I give him glory. I give him honor for the times when he has done all these different things. Now I can share it with you. You know, I can share this with you. You know, that uh, one uh, Saturday night, I uh, spent the whole night praying for Living Word. Every time I close my eyes, I was praying. So when I came in, Dana came up to me that day. She came up to me that day. You, she did. And uh, she said, uh, I'll pray. And I said, well, praise the Lord. I said, because I've been praying all night. And I know she didn't understand what I meant. She didn't understand what I meant. But I had been pulling down strongholds to casting out this and casting just pulling down the things that came to my spirit man 
pulling it down, pulling it down, casting it down. And she prayed an awesome prayer. She, you know, she prayed. She, she walked right on in. She walked right in, but I know she didn't understand what I said. Why, why I said that? I said, I've been praying all night. I said, I ain't had a tap of sleep. I've been praying all night. So, when your night season changes, let it change. It's for a reason. It's for a reason. When when your seasons in your life start changing, because the seasons are going to start changing in our lives, and you can you can write it down. This date right here. You can write it down. The seasons are going to start changing. God is going to start using to you to do extraordinary things. Let me read to you what he gave me about the extraordinary calling. I shared a little bit. The extraordinary is calling. God is calling you out of what you have known and is inviting you into the deep waters. You are being beckoned to abandon the familiar and the comfortable, to be comfortable, you know, and the, the safe. You got to be safe. He wants you to step out into the eternal and the new dimension of living. What will let you, what will you let restrict you? What will you let restrain you? We have a lot of restraints. Familiars of the com- familiar, the comforts. Sometimes it's the comforts of an old season. Sometimes it tries to hold us from embracing the new things God wants to launch into us. We prefer the old ordinary because the extraordinary has too much uncertainty attached to it. It's uh, what we've been in, we've been uh, used to doing what we've been used to doing. So we, we don't want to give it up. But it was good for that season. He said it was good for that time. But now the God of the extraordinary is calling. We walk by faith and not by sight. Faith is your anchor. And that, that's what's going to sustain you in this season. You don't have to walk by faith. If he tell you step out, step out and do this, step out on. You're going to have to do it. You don't have to have all the ins and the outs and the what's in a you know it don't have to all be tied together it said who called us is faithful first Thessalonians 5 and 24 faithful that are the steps ordered by God Psalms 37 and 23 when he orders your steps he wants to order your steps he want to order my steps will you allow him to order your steps can he tell you where to go? You know, uh, when he told uh, when he told Noah what to do, he had to step out and do it. He didn't know where the wood was going to come from to build the ark. He didn't know he didn't you know he didn't know a whole lot of things, but he chose to do it. And you know, when he told Abraham to you know put Lot out, go here, put him out, you know, it was for a reason. You know. And then he was he was sharing with me about uh, Lot's wife. Sodom and Gabor had got in her heart. She couldn't let it go. So she she died. She couldn't let it go. Some of the things that the enemy has tried to place in your heart or try to place upon you, even by other people. Circumstances, situations, losses, deaths, uh just just uh money problems. He tried to place all this stuff in your heart. This this keeps you from going forward. It's like you're constantly looking back. But you know what he said? He said, we got to let those things that are behind stay behind. We got to press toward the mark of the high calling in Christ Jesus. We got to press. We got to press. It's a press. It's a press. Got to let go some of those things. What's holding on to you? Tell it, let you go. Let me go. Let me go. There's a higher calling upon my life. There's a higher place in the spirit where he wants to take us. He want to take us there. 
Faith helps you see in the dark. Break the cycle. But one thing I do, that's what I just said, forgetting those things which are behind and pressing on to the things which are ahead, Philippians 3.13, not resting on education, our degrees, what we represent, the old level, you know, you know, I got this bastard, you know, this good this degree, I got this, you know, I got this talent, I got this forget about all those things. Forget about those things. Let go to step into the new dimension. Push past your comfort zone that you can start learning how to navigate the unfamiliar terrain. We got to know how to navigate. We got to know how to get out there and talk to them, what to say to them. I had one man come up, all he wanted to do was look at my basket and tell me what the Bible says about this and that and this. And it just, it just went on and on. I said, Lord, I got to get away from this man, my God. Because he really wanted me to argue the word with him. He really wanted me, and that's what they want. They might have a little bit. You know, that's why, that's how I got put out. <laughs> I got put out of the, uh, I'm not going to call it denomination, but I got put out of that house. I got put out. <laughs> I got put out. The client had a son to rise up against me. He told me to get out. I never did the boy nothing. <laughs> but she had been talking about me. He told me to get out. And of course, you know, I left. And of course, you know, they wanted me to come back the next day. Come and he missed me. I said, I'm sorry, Miss Janice, I'm not going back. I'm not going back. My season is up with them. My season was up. So this was the lady that talked 24 hours. Now I'm in a house where she does not hear when she does not talk. <laughs> it's not funny, y'all. I'm just really, I'm, I'm just telling the way you took me from this talking lady 24 hours. Now, she don't talk at all, and I have to try to understand her, and she got to try to understand me. So it is quiet all day long. She knits, and every now and then she'll, she'll try to tell me something, and I'm sitting there like, mm -hmm. and I say, God knows I don't know what she's, I don't know, you know, because she, she's doing, you know, and, I, and I'm like, mm -hmm. and I'm <laughs> Oh, like God knows, I don't know what she's saying. I really don't know. So I'm just, you know, so he's taking me from here to there, you know, to here. And, you know, I, I'm going to be faithful until I walk out of there and go to my house. You know what I mean? You know, so he's just, he just showed me if you just, you know, wherever I send you. Because he sent you to places for a reason. It's for a reason I'm there. And uh, I was telling uh, Pastor Margaret about it. She said, pray that her tongue be loosed and her ears be open. And every chance I get, I say, loose her tongue and let her ears be open. You know, because I, I can't really share a whole lot with her. She don't want to write it. She, she, she just want to, you know, kind of mimic it. And I don't have the learning to understand, but the Holy Ghost knows what she's, you know, so far she haven't put me out, you know, <laughs> I haven't been put out, they, she haven't called the office and told on me, because they'll call and tell on you, they will tell on you, and uh, I was talking to Joy, one time I said, I don't know if she won't be there or she don't, I said, Joy said, like, Mama, you know those people, you go to special people's houses, what's wrong with you, I said, you got a point there. <laughs> You know, I mean, what do you, you know you're going to someone's house to minister to them. You know this. But I guess you just expect some normal, you know, do you understand what I'm saying? You expect, you know, that we're in the same room, but you're not going to turn your back to me and knit all day. And so when I'm ready for to feed her, I have to say, You know, I'm trying to get it because I watched her grandchildren, and they do. I went in there hollering at the woman. That's not going to get it. 
I can talk as loud as I want. She cannot hear me. And uh, they talk to her. They'll say, you know, they, they are moving their lips, but they're not talking loud. So that's what I have to do. I, I guess she said, that's a crazy one. So you know, so you, it's, I, I got over that part, you know. So, so it's like getting over. But we went to Walmart one time. And it was terrible. I didn't know what she wanted. She couldn't tell them what she wanted. And they was looking to me, and I said, you know, I'm like, so I said, where's the pen and the paper, you know, because I, I couldn't, and all she wanted was two money orders. And we was going to do something. We were going through something. So I just thank God for him and what he's doing. So I pray that your spirit is stirring because there's a lot in the future for this ministry. And what's ahead on the horizon is overwhelming. And, you know, that's what the Lord told me is overwhelming. It's superior to what's be, what is behind. Take the limits off of God. Take the limits off. It's time to take the limits off. Take the limits off. Start opening our ears to hear what the Spirit of God say to us. Take it seriously. I share it with uh, Tracy. She was praying last night, and she was saying a lot of things that had been placed on my heart. And I was thanking God for confirmation that he, he does that. And I, I thank God that he do that. He will have someone to speak and confirm what he has given you. And that causes you to rise up boldly knowing that you heard from God. He do that so you can boldly speak. You know, you're him, his ambassador. And if a ba ambassador goes somewhere and he's like, mm, you, you understand what I'm saying? So when we are his ambassadors, we have to rise up. We have to rise up because he rises up big on the inside of us because he wants his people blessed. And he wants his people to know how much he loved them. He loved us so much. He loved us so much that he gave. And he's constantly giving. He's constantly letting us know that I love you, and I'm well able, and I'm, I'm, I'm ready. But this is another thing he shared with me, too. He said, the things that you're believing me for, he said, if it's easy for you to get it, it's easy for you to let it go. So when we... When things come to us, let's say, for instance, you believe in God for something, and it, it, it takes a while. You're praying. You believe in him. You believe in him. When it does come and it come to pass, it's like, thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. So everything is not given to us on a silver platter. It's not just given to you. He wants you to know that I want you to have it. But I want you to be grateful. I want you to be able to stand. And I want you to know that we don't mind waiting. God is, is worth us waiting for. It's worth us waiting for. Because if we go out there too soon and we're not ready, then we're going to come back. We're going to come back feeling defeated. But when we go out, we're going to know that there's no defeat, only victory. Why? Because he has sent us out there. And he has prepared us. He shone our feet with the preparation of the gospel peace. You know, we put on our whole armor. We're ready. We are ready. We're ready to do your bidding, Lord Jesus. We are ready to do your bidding. And nothing's going to hold us back. And nothing's going to hold us down. Because we are ready. So I just thank God for... Um, I thank God for what he's had me to share, and I just pray that um, he was glorified. And I just 
Oh, I'm just so grateful and so thankful for what is going on in this ministry. And it's not walking by sight. It's not. It's just not what you see. It's not what you see. It's not what you see. We cannot walk by sight. We cannot walk by sight. You know, we cannot judge with the eye. You know, because the eyes will tell you, you know, they'll tell you all the wrong things. Are we going we gonna to trust God? Are we going to believe God? And he's, he's working on us. He's working on us. So I thank God for that. Pastor, would you like to comment?